Hello everyone, Will again here and today I'm joined by my sister Ellie because she's going to give me a hand and what we're going to be doing today is explaining why we use Zolvix when we're worming the U-Lambs. So yes, we're worming the U-Lambs today and I'm going to tell you exactly why we're using this special wormer today and why we aren't using different ones. So that is the plan for today guys, I really hope you enjoy it. If you do, please give the video a massive like if you want to see more stuff like this just smash that subscribe button and don't forget videos every wednesday and saturday at half seven in the morning guys cheers hope you enjoy <laughs> Right, so first jobs first, we're going to whack the wrapper off, get it all set up and then we get all the ULAMs in, there's about 90 to go through here, we've come down in the late afternoon, it's Friday today guys, I'm a little hungover because I went to the Farmers Weekly Award last night, really good night, I even met Tom Pemberton, so yeah, that's my claim to fame from last night, but yeah, we got to get all these ULAMs in, get them wormed, it shouldn't take too long, it's a quick job, and then I'll explain exactly why we are using Zolvix today guys, so get it set up and then I'll speak to you after. So that is the wrapper all set up guys, so what we're going to do now, get all these ULAMs in, they are quite spread out across this field and there's actually 10 in the field after because they jumped over the fence, that's another video we've got to fix that, but yeah they're looking quite well in here as I've told you all before, this is all A flock and B flock ULAMs, the ones with yellow on their shoulders, they're B flock, the ones that are clean are A flock, we've got to tag all these with some visual tags very soon as soon as the weather drops a bit because we don't want flies in them. But yeah, I'll stop babbling on, we'll get these in and we'll get them wormed. Right Al, if you go down this side and I'll go around the back of them and we'll push them over there, they walk them along the fence and they should go in pretty easy. Fingers crossed, is that right? Yeah. Cool. Right, so while Ellie is over there getting those lot in, I just need to go and get these ULAMs that are in the other field. As I said, there was a slight problem with the fence. As you can see here, some of the posts have just lent over They've managed to hop over somewhere. I'm not 100% where, oh, it's fairly wet in this bit. But yeah, oh yeah, it's here. So they've hopped over there. That's a job for the next week to get that fixed. Oh, just because I'll put the drone footage up now of the floods in the winter. So what I did is basically wiped out loads of the fences. This one wasn't too bad, but the one over to the next, that's really bad. So yeah, job for the next couple of weeks is to get these fences fixed. Luckily, the boundaries are all fenced, so they're only getting into another field that we're gonna graze, but still, we don't want them really getting out and wrecking the fences, and we want them looking nice. So yeah, we'll quickly get these in, and then we'll get those in. Go on. That's it. Right guys, so that is all the ULAMs in now. They're all in the wrapper, ready to be wormed. So the plan of action now, I'm gonna give all these an oral drench of Zolvix. So Zolvix is basically a group four wormer. There are five types of wormer, and I'll put them on screen now somewhere. So normally you would only use groups one to three, and they're the usual, one, usual ones that you can use throughout the year. And these are dependent on the um, species of worms that you're trying to get rid of. So basically what we're doing this is worming them basically to kill any worms that these may have. Right, so we have to have a quick pause there because we had a train go past. And as you can see, if Ellie pans around now, there's a tra train line right by where we're doing the sheep. So basically back onto the wormer, 
This is a Group 4 wormer and these basically have no resistance to any of the worms around that are in very odd places in the country there is a little bit of resistance to this now so basically the reason we're using this is to swipe out all the worms in all the sheep and we do this once a year so that we don't build any more resistance to the other wormers so if you get what i mean if any of these have worms that are resistant slightly to any of the other wormers this basically kills them out and leaves worms that aren't resistant to anything so by doing this we're protecting the other wormers we have available and using this as well as that this is very expensive so this is about 200 pound a litre approximately it is a little less than that but it's very expensive because other wormers only are like 10 to 30 pounds so this is very very rare stuff like a lot of people do use it but yeah we need to be very careful of this because this is one of the best products that we have as sheep farmers to get rid of worms in the flock so we don't want to overuse it because if we use it all the time then we'll get resistance to Zolvix. So that is basically what we're doing today, guys. And I'll get these all worms. Sorry if that was a bit wordy, but yeah, that is basically why we use Zolvix and why it's so important. Right, guys, so I'm just jumping in halfway through the video here because I want to tell all of you one of the challenges that I've set myself. So as a lot of you know, I'm going to the British Farming Awards in two weeks because I've been nominated for Digital Innovator of the Year. And I've set myself a challenge to try and get to 2,000 subscribers before the awards night because I thought it would be quite fun to try and do so. I need 200 more subscribers. I've got 20 yesterday, so the challenge is going ahead. I set myself so massive thank you everyone for the support again for the awards. If you know anyone that might like the channel, get them to subscribe, guys. I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, we'll crack back on with the video, guys, now. What? Oh, sorry. Ellie was waving at me. Yeah, we'll crack on with the video again now, guys. I know I've shown a lot to you before how I drench the sheep, but for any of those new people to the channel, I'm just gonna show you quickly so you know exactly what I'm doing. So basically, this is to mark them so that we know we've done it. So quite easy. Get the sheep like this, and it'll be on camera. So in camera, like that, three, and that's done. So, just to say it again, and basically put it in the back of the mouth so it goes down the throat, basically squeeze, they're getting five mil each. And that is because we weighed all these a week ago. So if you remember, we pulled all the tupping lambs out here that are over 48 kilos. So these are basically getting drenched for 50 kilo lambs because a lot of these are between 40 and 50 kilos. So five mils each, we'll get through these and get them all done. Shouldn't take too long because this wrapper is really efficient. We are also using the Synchro drencher today so massive thank you to Roxanne and Kiwi Kit who have supplied me this before so this is Synchro stuff really good stuff um, and I basically use all that kind of stuff for all my animal health dispensary stuff like Crovet guns, um, drenchers, anything like that they're good so basically I'll crack on. Let me feel your love again Cause I've been running round in circles screaming out your name Take me to a different place Just the two of us and we can stay up all night Kissing under street lights Doing what we want to Doing what we need to do Staying up all night Everything is alright Oh, I wanna be with you Oh, I wanna be with you Let me be the someone who can hold your hand Right guys, so we are about halfway through now. We've got through them fairly smoothly. Ellie's been pushing them up whilst I've been worming. There was just one bit I wanted to add in. So basically, we are worming these ewe lambs now, but with the ewes that are over there, they actually don't get wormed. So we try our hardest not to worm the ewes um, through the year because we think they build up natural resistance and they don't really need it. So we find this works a lot better. Obviously these get done as they need them with feast leg count. So we feast leg count everything. So the ewes do need doing, we will do them, but we try not to. 
these these have been wormed a couple of times this year they've had a group two wormer um, and a couple of group three wormers depending on the species of worms that they've had so this is the first group four and the only group four that these will have some people would say that we worm them quite a lot but we worm them to keep them growing because if you let the worms take over obviously these go backwards and that is not good because you want to keep them growing obviously now these are on some winter grazing so we want these what people do say with worms they need to be at least i think it is 35 40 kilos to make sure that they perform well over winter which all of these are pretty much 40 to 45 kilos there's odd little ones in the yellows but we're trying to keep more this year as i said before because these are all are all our own replacements so we've got 105 coming into the flock We've got about 60 pedigree ones, which are the clean white ones, and the rest are ones that are going to be fucking. I think I'm going to put a texel to them, I'm not 100% sure yet. You look here, the ones are just a bit better quality, so they've got a bit tighter skins, they've actually got better performance figures. So if you look at these two next to each other, this one's got a bit more open wall than this one. This one's a little bit more confirmation, this may not be its breed type. Somewhere in here we'll have Susie, which is Zoe's pet lamb. I haven't seen it yet. She obviously isn't the type, but yeah, we'll carry on going. Anything else I can think of that I need to tell you, I will do. Just nursing a hangover. Um, yeah, we're cracking on. Won't get done before it goes dark, so yeah, we'll carry on going. We're cracking on well, aren't we, Al? Right, so we always, on the farm, I always keep the Zolvix bottles because they're really good because with these they actually have a tube that goes down them just like in I was gonna say a fairy liquid bottle I said that before in like a spray kitchen bottle so if I just tip this all in that's the Zolvix in there now this little tube that goes all the way to the bottom so we keep these bottles because obviously usually with a wormer you have to use them that way around and we all know it ends up down your back so by being able to keep it the right way up just a little tip that or a little trick that I use I keep all the Zolvix bottles for different wormers and that way my back stays clean and it's a bit better and that's just a little tangled in there but if you tip them upside down they don't work yeah you're right if you actually use them the way that you usually would they don't work right let's finish this off for all that's a nice shoe here so for you guys that want to know what a good clean is like this is a good example nice jet black nose really nice feminine head nice bit of meat on there she's a good size you don't want huge sheep with clins because at the end of the day if they're bigger they eat more yeah really good confirmation stands well she's a really nice shoe and she's obviously going into the pedigree flock one other thing i forgot to say guys when these are going out all of these are going into the same field but they're going to get moved in the day's time so what we want to do these will all pull out the worms that we're basically killing at the moment now onto this so this will be dirty pasture and then we're going to move them onto a fresh field so that they don't contaminate that one with worms that's basically why we do it always leave them on for 24 hours and then move them afterwards so we'll get these all finished because it's nearly dark and then we're done so let's get cracking One really good thing that you probably haven't noticed through the video, we've actually lost no tags this year, so it must be a first. We've trialled the Alpha Line tags from Roxanne Tags, and these are really good for retention. Like I've said before, 100% retention. We haven't lost a tag. So through all of these, they've all got the full tags, and these are just, yeah, really impressed with them. Not used them before. We've used the tag faster ones in the past from Roxanne. We're trialing these this year and we're really impressed with them so any of you actually looking for tags to use next year at lamin i really recommend these all right girls come on go on girls come on girls bit of scald and I think this foot's had a little bit of foot rot in it yeah one thing never clip feet that might look like it needs clipping 
but don't touch it because you're going to cause more harm than good. A lot of people clip their feet, you shouldn't. <laughs> All the evidence shows that you should leave sheep to just figure it out on themselves. It'll wear down once its foot's good. And that little bit of shell, on, sorry, that little bit of hoof is actually protecting its foot. If you get rid of it, it's soft and it's going to cause more harm than good. So watch any vets, the, what's his name? Farm Vet Films, he did one recently and with Cami. He said when they were doing the tops, don't touch them. And our local vets are the same, Glenform Vets, don't touch them. So that's what we do when they've got a bad foot. The girlies, there's some nice lambs in here. These yellow ones have just got a bit loose of skin, but they're nice. Well set on. Hi guys, so that is us all done. All the ewe lambs are all out grazing again. They all look happy. It didn't take too long though, basically. From setting up to finish, it was now an hour and a half. Geese are going over because it's night time. Massive thank you everyone for all your support. Massive thank you to Ellie for helping today. And as like I said, halfway through the video, British Farming Awards in just two weeks. Last week I went to the Farmers Weekly Awards and it's got me buzzing and really excited for it. So yeah guys, if you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button. Get anyone you know to subscribe to the channel. 200 more subscribers to 2000. Massive thank you again guys. I'll see you all soon. Cheers, bye.